Hey guys, this is Richie coming at you from uh, New Life South Coast with the Daily Sauce. We're trying something new this week, trying to break down a little bit of Pastor's message, get into a little bit of a dialogue. Um, so let's see how this goes. Um, so for this week, um, you know, Pastor went over a new series titled um, Freedom Road. So we're going to be going over uh, the Beatitudes um, found in Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Um, today's discussion, let's um, let's hit it where, where we kind of jumped in this week with uh, verse 3, where it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, so with me today, I have um, I have Bennett. So, you know, when you hear um, poor in spirit, Bennett, what does that what does that sound like to you? What does that mean? So something that I think about uh, reflecting on it from. Uh, so in case you guys don't know, I actually edit the TV show on Monday. So I take Pastor's sermon and kind of cut it from a full hour to 25 minutes, which is arguably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, trying to get this whole thing to fit. But something that kind of stuck out to me that he didn't say, but it, it resonates with me is this idea that I think to be poor in spirit, um, it's almost like this, this sense of you're content. It doesn't mean that you love where you're at. It doesn't also mean that it's like the worst thing in the world, but it's also this place of like, okay, this is where I am. I don't want to be here, but it, but I can't do anything about it in the moment. So what do I have to do to get to where I want to be? Right? Like, I love what pastor said about when he used that homeless man analogy mm -hmm. and you think, I don't think a homeless man or a homeless person wants to do that, but they understand, okay, this is where I'm at. I need help. What do I have to do to get out of this place? And I think in that realm, it, it's 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 a hard concept to grasp. Like you have to you have to beg and you have to really humble yourself and be in that place of it's like God. I don't care where I'm at. I have to do this. But to even get to that point, it's kind of what he said. You have to accept this is the place you're right. at. Um, I could kick and scream about it. I could cry about. It. I could say God, this is unfair. I hate this. I don't want it to be this way. And I don't think that that's wrong, but that's not going to inherently make it better, mm -hmm. right? Like you have right. to you have to put some kind of motion or legwork into it. And so I think it starts with this idea of okay, I'm choosing to accept this is where I'm at, this is what I'm going through. Now let me get a game plan and say, okay, I don't want to 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 feel this way or be in this place anymore. What mm -hmm. does it require of me? Like pastor, that humility, admitting I have a problem. Um, getting a good support system, kind of the points he broke down right. at the end. Remember those three points. So, yeah. And I, I, you know, I like how you brought up, you know, the, the fact that it is a, uh, it's a matter of fulfillment or contentment. Mm -hmm. Um, that's very different than, uh, than being complacent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause when you, when it's a complacency piece, you're, you're at where you're at. Woe is me. Um, you know, and, and, and you don't see that, that there is more to, to the story. Exactly. Um, and with God, I mean, there's a lot more to the story. Right. Um, you know, and I, I think a big part of it is definitely just kind of realizing that, um, you know, we, we typically have that natural tendency to be prideful, to be selfish. Oh yeah. Um, rather than to to you know to to rely on God or to trust in in God, rather than right. you know trying to remain in complete control. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so we have to have that point where where we realize that we need God, um, right. that we can't do it on our own. Exactly. Um, and so that's that that poor in spirit where it's you know you're getting to that bottom to that to that piece where it says you know what as much as I strive as much as I try. Exactly. I don't have it all together and that's okay. Right. You know, it's okay that it's we're not together because that's where God steps in and says, "All right, now now that you're trusting me, relying on me, let's move forward." I think that's where the contentment piece comes in saying, "Okay, God, like I understand that if I'm going to get through this, I have to accept this is where I am and the only way I'm going to get as we might say further along or maybe out of this thing, I have to say, "God, it's it's all you. It's not, you know, it's not more money in my bank account. It's not that that perfect uh, relationship or whatever. It's okay, God, what do you want to do in this? So I, I think that's awesome. I completely agree. You know, and another, you know, another question that kind of jumped out um, was, you know, are you happy with who you are in Jesus? Mm. So, are, so are you asking me personally if I am or what, maybe what kind of well, what I, what, you know, what I, is you that, know. what kind of emotional, what, what, what does that invoke with, with kind of like the thought process as far as, you know, when you really contemplate and meditate down on that, I mean, it, it it's a really important question. Yeah. I, I think what's so interesting about like the as Christians what our faith journey looks like I think what's really difficult for me to wrap my head around but it's also encouraging is the fact that there isn't necessarily a destination with it. Mm -hmm. We will obviously all pass away one day and we'll go to heaven and we'll be in glory with Christ forever which is awesome. But as long as I'm on earth it's like okay, maybe I could sing a lot of really good songs <laughs> which is fine but <laughs> 
if I'm not praying and being in constant communication with God right, and having or, a heart behind it. Exactly. The, the analogy that I've used before with folks, it's, it's so I, I used to film a lot of weddings and be in the wedding industry. And it's kind of like when people um, spend all this money on, on the wedding day, right? Mm. But you're not really a great spouse or like you're, you're really short with your temper. Mm. You're really aggressive. The, so at the end of the day, it's like, okay, you had a really beautiful wedding. You know, your dress was great. Your suits were awesome. Your honeymoon was fine. But then you get into like the nitty gritty of, 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 of living. Marriage, right. And and you almost go, ah, I think I focus too much on one day. And and right. happiness in Christ, I, I don't, as I get older, I don't think it's about like that one moment at the altar where like you cry and, and you fall down. And it, those moments are very necessary. But I also think it's like, hey, you have a Tuesday afternoon where like you're driving to go see a client, right? right. And, and you get cut off and you're like, Oh, so give me strength, <laughs> yeah, Lord. So right? I'll like I you, think sometimes you, you, you know, pray for that. Right? Um, you know, and, and and going back to that analogy you used with with like the uh, the wedding and the marriage, um, you know, and, and really it comes down to like the investment portion of it. Right. So, what are you investing? Are you investing in just the party, or you exactly. want to invest in the marriage, where you want to invest in that future together with your spouse, where? Right. You know, you know. Let's flip that over to to where we stand in relationship with God, and right. what are we putting into that? You know, exactly. we can't expect God to always show up and, and do everything and, and and kind of pull us along. We have to put that time and that effort in, and and, and have that relationship. I think we forget a lot, and I've I've been thinking about this a lot recently. Um, God has feelings. You know, like there are th the Bible straight up says there are things we can do that bring joy and pleasure to God, but there are also things that God is straight up not a fan of and does not approve of and doesn't like. And so, when it comes to that, it's like if our goal is to is to make God happy and to delight in the Lord, and He wants to do the same with us, it's exactly what you said. There's a there's a back and a forth. It's not just okay, God, I. I listened to, you know, I did the solid 15 on the daily sauce. I listened to a little right. worship, read a little Bible, prayed a little. Now, Check make me feel and goosebumps go. and make yeah. me happy. Right. I think it's very much like, oh, this this is an ongoing thing and, and, right. and a process, right? That happiness in Christ is, is not as simple as just, uh, again, the shakes or the feeling or whatever. It's like, oh, God, I like we go back to the beginning. I am content in right. this moment. It doesn't mean I love everything about it but i understand this is where you have me and i'm going to be faithful mm -hmm. until it's it's the next thing which right. which is what we're going to do forever you right. know what and, i mean so you, you know i like that you brought up joy you know because joy is you know it's it, it's one of the fruits of the spirit you know we can find joy um in galatians 5 22 um where it is one of the you know one of those fruits mm. um but you know how much more can we bring joy to god than mm -hmm. when we you know commune with him have that right. in, you know that 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 real relationship pray to him worship him but then you know show that love to others i mean Absolutely. i think god is up there like happy and, and joyful for the fact that that you know here we are as his children you know reflecting that image right you know and, and and so you know joy is different from happiness in that it's not necessarily the emotional part of mm -hmm. it um but we have to seek joy you know it, right it, it tells us that joy is imparted by god you know right. it, it, he gives it to us through the holy spirit and mm -hmm. it's not just something that we're gonna you know flip the switch and feel and and feel you know all day long um right. that's that emotional piece where we Absolutely. have to keep those emotions in check right um and always know and trust that that joy that 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 will come from God. Absolutely. You know, it's not just something that you know. It, it's it's based on works or it's based on on a feeling. Um, it's so much deeper than that. That's so much so more than that. Yeah, I um, agree. You know, so you know, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, being blessed is to be you know fulfilled, content, and with joy. Um, you know, society tells us many times that you know we find fulfillment or we find contentment with materialistic things. Yeah. You know, money, right. my bank account. Um, you know what car I drive or, or anything that, that you want to say that that holds value in your own life. Right. Um, you know, but even when we get those things, we don't feel like we attained any, you know, fulfillment. Yeah. You know, there's always, it, it, it fills that void for, you know, just an instant. And then it's like, okay, let's move on to the next thing. Right. Rather than filling that with, with God, you know, right. filling that with, you know, just walking this thing out and, and, and being able to, you know, give back to others and, and, and really just, you know, try to, to be, you know, what God called us all to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, some of the key points that I, I took home from the message this week was, you know, definitely when, when pastors, you know, spoke about God asking Adam and, and really all of us, you know, where are you? Mm. Um, 
So are you close to God? Do you have a strong relationship? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just some thoughts and, and really some questions to reflect on as you go out the week this week um, is really where are you, you know, um, and, and, and hear that small, still voice from God that 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 always calls out to us just to have that relationship, bring us back around mm -hmm. um, and, and really put our focus back on him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not good to be alone. You know, examine your inner circle. Is mm -hmm. God central with those who are closest to you? Um, those who, you know, you go to it for advice or to have discussions, your friendships, things like that, that, that deeper circle. I mean, is that, you know, is that going to be something that, that is godly, um, mm -hmm. where it's God central and, you know, you, you're comfortable in that, you know, that's what you want to surround yourself with. Yep. Um, you know, cause you know, pastor said many times, you know, show me your friends, I'll show you your future, mm -hmm. you know? So what are you surrounding yourself yep. with? Is it just Netflix and, you know, whoever's in and out at that time as your friend, mm -hmm. or is it, you know, someone that you're doing life together with? the ups, the downs, and in it with prayer. Amen. That's good. Um, yeah. So uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll close it down today with prayer um, and hope to see you guys next week with, um, you know, we'll, we'll pick it up where we're at, we'll pass the leaves off with the uh, the next beatitude. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We just, we cut, we thank you for today, Lord, and, and, and all that you're doing. We thank you for just making your presence known to us, God, that that we have a God that we can, you know, put our trust in and and really rely on. We ask that you humble us and, and just, you know, teach us to be poor in spirit so that we can rely on you, so that we can trust in you, God, with, with all that we have and all that we do. Go with us this week as, as, we, as we, you know, go through every day. Go with us in our job, in our, in our marriages, in, in every relationship that we have. And just, you know, we ask that your presence is felt there, God, and that people feel your reflection off of us. So just use us, Lord. Change our heart. Soften it. Give us you know, more of your spirit and, and help us just to, to reach out to that one other person and just, you know, just help them to find the joy and, and, and to find you, God. So we thank you for all that you're doing here in our lives and in the church and, and in the whole world, God, for this is, this is all yours. Mm. So we thank you in advance for all the blessings that are going to come this week, for all the salvations. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.